Today, I'm going to be unboxing an Avalon Nano 3S. I'll provide a brief overview, go through some of its features, and then get it connected to a pool. This unit is the latest iteration in the Nano series from Canon, which offers 6 tera hashes a second at 140 watts. I purchased this unit from Helium Deploy. The link is available in the description. If you head over to Helium Deploy, you can use code AVOIDBIT for 10% off. This is one of the lowest prices I've ever seen for this device. In lieu of all the recent tariff changes, it was important that my order shipped from the USA to avoid any additional fees or tariffs. In my situation, it was shipped from a USA-based address. Zero tariffs. The overall packaging for this, including the shipping box, is very condensed. It fits together very well, very snug. The first thing we have here is the mining unit. And if we take out these additional inserts and compartments, we'll eventually get down here to the bottom where the power brick is. And in that little package next to it is the power cord. So we'll go ahead and take all of that out. In this slim package, it's very important to find the Wi-Fi module. It's located at one of the ends. After you find this, go ahead and plug it into the unit. Alternatively, you can purchase a USB to Ethernet adapter. There is a limited version of these adapters that are supported. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in getting one of those instead to hardwire this to your network. Another cool feature is the improvement on their ventilation. In the previous model, this area felt very flimsy and cheap. Well, it's been improved with a slide out cleanable or replaceable filter. Plus, you still have the option to remove that thick rear faceplate if you desire. All right, let's get this unit connected. Once it powers on, you can touch the display to the right to cycle through the screens. We see the message, please configure the network with Avalon Family App. You can find the QR code in the instruction book that came with the device. You can also use the QR code in this video or visit their website directly. I will also put a link in the description below to help you get to the right place. After you have the app installed, the first screen is asking us to create an account. You can click skip in the top right. However, you won't be able to manage your device outside of your network. If you create an account, you can manage your device remotely. So, after you've made your decision, the next step is to enable slash grant Bluetooth permissions for this app. This enables our initial setup access for the device. Afterwards, it will switch and it'll use Wi-Fi. Next, it's going to search for our device. Stand near your device with Bluetooth enabled and search. In a few seconds, it should detect the device and you can select it, followed by another screen where you can click Connect. Once it connects, you need to configure the Wi-Fi connection. Find your SSID or network ID using the drop-down and enter the password. Now save. You should now see this as one of your listed devices. Since this is the very first time this device is being configured, it's going to prompt you to change the password. This is the device password, not your account password if you previously created one. The initial password is admin, all lowercase. Then enter your new password and your confirmation of your password again and press save. Once that's done, the device will connect to your Wi-Fi network. Now it's time to configure the pools. Select your device tile from the list of devices and choose settings. This will take us to a section where we can configure our pools. Go ahead and enter your pool information. There are three tabs available, so you can enter up to three different pools. You may have also noticed on our device menu, we have the option to set work mode and lighting mode. Work mode allows us to switch from low, medium, and high settings on our device. This ranges from 65 watts to 100 watts to 140 watts. Then finally, the lighting section, which lets you customize the light effects on your device. Now, I left my device running for over 24 hours and I wanted to check on the power consumption. The device reports right around 130 watts on the high setting, while at the wall it's pulling right around 135 to 144 watts. So we can see we are hitting the benchmark that the device advertises. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on X for even more content.